Aberdeen and Recovery. Aberdeen and Recovery. Aberdeen and Recovery. Aberdeen and Recovery. We're, We're here, here for you. you. Building that bridge from dependence to independence. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you are listening to Recovery on Air on Shmoo 99.8 FM. My name is Dermot, uh, and you will notice that I am not Lindsay. Um, uh, Lindsay's uh, she's not feeling a little bit under the weather. Um, she uh, worked from home yesterday and uh, wasn't feeling too good. Uh, some positive news, though, she, she did uh, get herself in for a COVID test. And she got the results back earlier today, this morning and uh, it came back negative. So there's no worries in regards to COVID, but she's still feeling a little bit unwell. So um, she's taking a little bit of her own advice that she's often given uh, and taking some self-care. And uh, she's spending a day at home and a couple of days in bed just to, to get over whatever kind of bug it is she's got. So wishing Lindsay um, well, all the best. Get, yep. well, Lindsay. Yeah. get well, Lindsay. Yeah, good. Yeah, get well. Yep, and love and hugs from us, um, uh, and we'll see you soon. And today uh, we're joined by Joan, Stevie and John, also from here. Um, and I'll maybe just start by a, a quick round the robin around the room. Um, and Joan, how are you today? Yeah. Um, I'm not too bad today. Um, just just getting used to the, the changing times as well with uh, lighter nights but slightly darker in the morning and I'm used to getting up and getting out for a walk early in the morning and it's a wee bit dark but that will change fairly quickly. Um, a, a wee bit frustrated with some technical problems earlier today um, but I actually was really looking forward to the radio show because that does, um, it lifts me, it does, it lifts me. So I'm um, really looking forward to, to the show today and listening to some great music and some good chat. And so shame Lindsay's not here to, to share it, but um, we wish her, wish her get well. Thanks, Joan. Thanks, Ruben, we certainly do. And Stevie, how are you doing today? <laughs> Hi, there, Um How's everybody? I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Dean the bad. Chugging along nicely. Yeah, chugging along. That's a, that's yeah. a, a great wee stay in, saying. And John, how, how is you? Uh, pretty good. Uh, yeah, enjoying the, uh, the warmer weather, <clears throat> the, uh, the sunshine at the moment. Uh, and with the restrictions easing as well, it's uh, got me thinking ahead, looking forward to spring, summer with, uh, you know, new activities and, uh, and getting out there. Yep, that's a, a positive outlook, John. I'm certainly hearing that from you. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, thanks, guys. Um, we don't have a guest as such uh, this week. Uh, last week, we were joined by Wendy Riley, um, who uh, gave us some wonderful hints uh, and, and suggestions in regards to complemental therapies, things that we could do and use. And um, we've described these things as tools in the past, but she certainly, she certainly offered us some new perspective and, and what we can do um, to keep uh, an eye on our own well-being. Um, and uh, I, I missed it actually at the, the show. I couldn't manage to come along to the show, but she also, she also actually um, done a, um, a, a little mindfulness session, I think. Mm, yeah, that was great. That yeah. was lovely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's always good there. Yeah. It's always good. Yeah, um, and I think it was um, forgotten to, but we were going to let everyone know about Wendy's book. Um, she has published a, a, a small book, a short book uh, called um, Tales of Enchantment. Uh, and these are stories to empower positive self and change change yeah 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 and joan i think you've read the book yeah yeah I, I i bought the book a number of years ago and it's just little little stories very positive stories i think she wrote it initially to help people um engage with hypnotherapy as, as ways of of um you know uh, getting into hypnotherapy but you just flick through it and there's very very positive stories um so i i loved it and i would hand it up just now and let you have a look but um lindsay's actually reading it at the moment so maybe she's reading it in bed 
um, okay. and just and just enjoying it. It's a lovely, lovely book. I thoroughly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've found lots of these things um, uh, during my own recovery journey very, very helpful. Um, it just it just broadens your horizons and makes you aware of other things that you can you can take on board and and use to just just help your 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 emotional well being. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's all good stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, taking a a pointer from um from Wendy's book there, um, we will be discussing this week. Um, and what we're terming is. Uh, re-entry opportunities um you know maybe taking a different slant and we have spoken in the past about re-entry anxieties and things but i think um especially picking up on some of the positive vibes coming from john there yeah starting to look at the opportunities that will be availing we're coming to the end of the month um we'll soon yeah we'll be it'll be april when we're uh, broadcasting this show. So yeah, I think we will, uh, our our topics of discussion will be very much about things to come and uh, look forward to. Yeah, so um, today, as, as I said, uh, we are looking at re-entry opportunities. And the first thing we'll, we'll uh, have a wee chat about is uh, we are We've just had a page planning uh, meeting with uh, the guys at Shmoo um, who do our design in one magazine. And we're looking to um, have that all pulled together and agreed. And then that will be going to the, the, the printers for publication in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and that will be Recovery Matters issue eight, um, uh, which is our spring and summer edition. So we thought it'd be a good opportunity um, to speak about that and give a little bit of a punt for it and tell everybody to watch for it coming through the doors. Um, We're also uh, looking to try and uh, release an online uh, edition of it, um, which will be uh, reader friendly, um, but that's that's been dealt with with people who are a lot more skilled than I am. Uh, uh, John being one of them, uh, looking at how we can pull the, the hard copy into a, an, an electronic copy um, so that people can access it. And yeah, um, it's there's, there's programs and things we can use to do that. So we're doing a joint publication this time. We're doing the, the hard copy printed editions, but we'll also have a, an online readable uh, edition. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, and... Uh, I know myself, um, with that topic of looking forward, um, I've done a, a, a page just about how the experiences of the last year have been kind of difficult. Uh, we all know how difficult they've been, but there's been lots of learning opportunities from that. Um, and I think and I hope that we've taken that forward and we will be um, certainly publicising um, in, in the magazine, but in all, all of our other medias and all of our other vehicles for promotion of air and what we do um, and we'll be looking to roll out a new timetable of uh, groups and meetings uh, some training opportunities and also the launch of the RPP project which is the recovery peer partnership uh, with ourselves in ADA and we've developed a, 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 we've built a, a developmental pathway um, that uh, we can offer and again uh, there's a, a couple of pages on the RPP um, project and the pathway that's came from that. So lots and lots of exciting opportunities to look forward to. And I think we've all agreed. In recovery, we find out the importance of, even if it's just a tiny, tiny fraction of, but forward momentum is very necessary. Um, Because as long as we're slowly kicking forwards, we're not being stuck. And, and, you know, as our own experiences have shown us, being stuck isn't the best place to be. It can, your comfort zone can start becoming a bit uncomfortable. And if you stay in that stuck place for long enough, often as not, we start rolling a bit backwards. So that forward momentum is greatly assisted by having things to look forward to. Um, it, it, it puts a forward focus. You're looking at solutions. You're not being stuck in a problem. You're looking at, at, at solutions. So, um, John, uh, I believe you've uh, pulled together another lovely article for us. Would you like to tell us the title of your article? Uh, the title is My Recovery on Air. 
Uh, so it's, um, as you can, as you can guess by the title, it has a lot to do with this very show. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, some of my experience, um, uh, personal experience with, with radio and my experience um, getting involved with, with the show and, and what we do. Absolutely, and a, and a beautiful play on words. Um, mm. John doesn't, doesn't uh, he's humble, very humble man is John, uh, but he's a beautiful play on words and uh, my recovery on air is a very, very poignant title. Uh, so yeah, as soon as you get a chance, uh, read John's article and, and I'm sure you'll be able to pick up on how he describes uh, the benefits that he's had uh, by being involved and pushing himself to get involved with the the, the media project and the, the media group and um, over a period of time, you know, building in confidence and yeah, he's 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 the stalwart. He's he's our engineer now. He's he's a guy in the background that's pushing buttons and clicking buttons and things. And uh, like like everything, we've we've all got skills and assets that if we're willing to push ourselves a little bit. We identify what we're good at and uh, yeah, uh, it's all important to keep this ship going. So cheers for that, John. And yes, uh, look forward to the oh, reason. Um, hi, John. Yeah, I, I loved it as well because I, I love radio. I have my radio on. I like the spoken word. I like music. But there was lots of facts in there that I wasn't aware of about radio. So it's a bit of education for me as well as your own um journey as it were in into into radio as as with us and through schmoo so fascinating i really really enjoyed it thanks john oh, th thanks very much that's that's all very flattering <laughs> yeah and it's yeah. it has been really quite an amazing experience so yeah um yeah uh, very thankful for that you deserve it john you do you certainly do Stevie, you are not. You didn't have an article in this one, but you, you, you've, you've had, you, you're a, a, a published writer now. You, you've had, you've had uh, articles in the previous yeah. editions, yeah. Yeah, I've had articles in the magazine. Um, the satisfaction of getting to see what you've written on paper, but just look scribbles. Once you get to see it in, in its final. Oh, the final cut that it did. you see the magazine it's glossy you're like no oh, wait I've actually got an article in a magazine see if you'd said up to me five years four years ago I would have told you that you lived on Mars or something <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. it would just never I would never have been a reality I was never gonna, I never even thought of that yeah 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 it's something it's something really quite miraculous and, and, and wonderful to be involved in something collaborative, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember I remember the first the first magazine that was published and we, we, they were delivered, they were dropped off. I can't remember they were dropped off at Shmoo or maybe ADA's office, I can't remember. Anyway, I, I'd got them in the back of the car and I'd, I'd opened the, one of the boxes and took it open and, and, and just looking at the magazine and the, the front cover and everything, I, I just teared up. I, I was just, I was just so emotional. All the ups and downs and the turmoils and, you know, the worry and panic about getting these articles together and write an article for a magazine. Oh my gosh, you know. It takes me all my time to write an email, never mind an article for a magazine. Um, so, but, you know, to have it all together and read through it and it was just, it was just really, it was just, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a standout moment for me um, and equally when when the the published the magazines are published and you see all the stories coming together and yeah it's it, it's 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 lovely it really is lovely um we've also uh, there's an article by a follow on article done by uh, Emma um in regards to the grow free project and the fight flight freeze um uh, uh training sessions that she does the the program that she does and just to let a, a shout out and uh, we will be running, uh, we will be providing um, opportunities for guys to engage in the, the Fight, Fight, Fleas uh, um, course in the future. Um, so look out for that as part of the timetable going into the the uh, May time, May, May, June time. Um, so there's an article by Emma on the Grow Free Project. We've also got um, the Street Pastors. They contributed a little article that's just letting everyone know about the, the support that they provide on a Friday and Saturday night, obviously, over the last year, where, uh, they haven't been out and about and 
being assistive to 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 guys who might be out in the town centre um, early hours of the the morning, uh, maybe having indulged in a few too many, and they 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 help uh, to make sure that these people are kept safe until they, they can get a taxi or a, or a ride home. Um, the Street Friends, uh, another organisation who um, we know of, uh, we are very proud to call uh, a lot of the guys who, who work on the Street Friends uh, volunteering as, as friends. Um, and they have been doing some amazing work over the last year and providing um, food uh, on the Union Street um, from two stands uh, through the week. And then uh, a, a, a regular, um, the, a little wee trolley they go around the town and there's little wee packs for, for, with some, some grub for the, the guys who are unfortunately uh, not best situated. Uh, so they've got a little article in the, the magazine as well. Um, who else, who else, John? Who, who am I forgetting? I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. Uh, Samaritans, did you mention? mention yeah, yeah, Samaritans, yeah. Um, you remember a couple of weeks ago with the, the chat along, um, giving us a little bit of information about Samaritans and how you can be involved in Samaritans. Um, so they've done a little article as well. Um, we also had uh, one of our friends from the Shire who contributed a, a, an article um, on being safe and everyone being safe. Yes, uh, very aware of the tragic uh, circumstances that led to the lady uh, losing her life. Um, but uh, his article is saying that, you know, there's, there's reasons that we all need to be safe. And um, yeah, Joan. Yeah, I just, just remembered as well, there's a lovely, inspiring recovery journey. Someone's, um, someone's own personal recovery journey. And it was just delightful to, to read it, to see where someone has been and where they are now. Mm -hmm. and, to, and the gratitude that comes across as well. And it's, it was just lovely, lovely to, to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a contribution from our, our lovely and luscious uh, Victoria. Um, so love and hugs to you, girl. Um, yeah, and she's she's just very briefly but beautifully succinctly described how she has came from where she was to where she is today. And I I, I won't give away any tales. Um, uh, uh, I'll let I'll let you read her article himself. But it's a, a beautiful a beautiful description of what is possible um, when we're willing to make the effort um, and, and 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 play our part in our our recovery. Hi and welcome back. Um, so we were speaking there about uh, the recovery, the issue eight of the Recovery Matters magazine, uh, our spring and summer edition. Um, if anyone, uh, while we're while we're on the subject, if anyone would like to get uh, have or get a little bit more information about uh, the how we publish the magazine and how we pull all the articles and the the, the content together. Um, ye, we will be giving out our, our contact details at the end, um, uh, including our chatterbox uh, email address. If you would like to be interested in, uh, if you are interested in being involved in, in the Recovery on Air show, um, the Recovery Matters magazine, also we've got the third arm of that, which is called Recovery in Action, which is more to do with filming and um, you know taking motion pictures about recovery activities. If you were interested and being involved, uh, give us a shout and, and we'll get back in touch with you and let you know about the project uh, because it's a, it's a continuing project, a media project. Um, and there's lots of other things that we spoke about in the past. We'd like to develop a, a podcast um, a, a, a avenue or no, a podcast vehicle. Is that the right terminology, guys? Am, am I being hip and trendy? Uh, no, I've probably used it wrong. It's probably nothing to do with a vehicle, but anyway. <laughs> um yeah, so, so yeah, if, if you'd be interested in getting involved, uh, get in touch and then we'll give you more information and welcome you uh, to be part of the, the media group. Um, yeah, so in the magazine, there's uh, part of the, the article that I wrote about um, these things shall pass and, you know, there's, all, there's always the, the, the light it is there at the end of the tunnel and about the, the, the things that we'll be looking to roll out um, into April and into May and then for the rest of the year. Um, there's also um, an article on the RPP project, the, 
Recovery Peer Partnership Project. And that's all to do with what we hope to roll out. Some of the stuff that we were doing previously, a lot of the, the sort of groups and the opportunities to drop in for a coffee and a chat, um, but we will be um, offering that um, on uh, what we are calling hybrid, uh, a hybrid um, opportunity, i.e. Um, people can come in face to face, small groups at this point, because we're a bit limited to how many people we can get in the, the group rooms. Um, but we also have installed apparatus that will allow people to still join that same meeting or the group um, uh, online. So we, people, we've got a big screen TV up in the wall. So people who can't manage to travel in or still a little bit uncomfortable coming out to the house and things, and um, they can still join us online. They will be able to see everyone in the in the in the group and equally the people in the face-to-face -face will be able to see guys online. So we hope that we can offer that kind of blended opportunity um, then avail uh, the groups to, to all who, who would like to come along. Good. Right, Stevie? I think it sounds like a good idea and up to, more up-to-date as well. Yep, yep, yep. And that, this is some of the learning that we've taken from, from what was enforced as, on us by, by the, the lockdown. Um, when we had to shift onto the Zoom. So we're, we're hoping that we can use and offer a little bit of both. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so all the all the groups in, in, that we used to run, like the, the, the couple of purpose and the opportunity to drop in and fit like a fit like check in just to say hiya, um, we'll be running these. Uh, there'll be a, a men's group on a Monday. Um, and equally a women's group on a Friday morning. Um, and these are just opportunities to to have discussions with other guys or girls um, who are in recovery, but may want to speak about things that might feel a little bit uncomfortable speaking about. If, you know, if, if, if the, us guys were speaking and, and Joan's here, we might have to curtail some of the things we may speak. And equally so, if Joan was speaking with Lindsay, it might be some things that they would want to speak about that might not be um, so appropriate for speaking about with guys. So we'll, we'll avail that opportunity. Um, in conjunction with that same developmental pathway, um, ADA will still be running their uh, morning check-ins online. Um, and the, uh, the, the, the recovery, all recovery meeting will still be provided. Um, so on top of that, um, we will be looking to roll out um, uh, some training opportunities and learning opportunities. Um, some of that stuff uh, I know that Stevie's done. Uh, ADA will still be running their self-coaching course. Um, I think Stevie has said in the past how much he benefited from the self-coaching course. <coughs> yeah, the the self-coaching. Definitely and, recommend so anybody yeah. that hasn't done it and could get the opportunity to do it, do it, can do it, do it. Yeah. yeah. Lots of good tools in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, lots, lots and ones I still use and probably will use for the rest of my life. Yep, yep. A good example of how, you know, and a description of the, the tools that we speak about. Um, a lot of they came from through the self-coaching. And Joan, she's done a self-coaching course uh, uh, ages ago and she's done a recovery coaching course. Um, so that all that will be availed. We'll also be um, running, it, it was part of the recovery college. Um, it's a program, a sort of stand, standalone program. It's called the Steps to Excellence. Um, and that's run over, is it five, no, eight sessions, Joan? Eight. Yeah, it, it, it is. Eight. And it's 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 not all in a one -er. It's over sort of eight. eight yeah. So yeah. you've got time to kind of let things um, just just sit with you and think yeah. about. And it, it comes, it, it is developmental because a lot of people have done DART. And then they've maybe not gone on to the recovery coaching right yeah. away. And it's yeah. like... Okay, well, what's the next step? What because they're, they're eager, they they want to do more, they want yep. to develop more and and have more tools in their toolbox. So the steps to excellence is really that kind of next step. Yeah, yeah. Um, it fills so, that gap, doesn't it? Yeah, and people mm -hmm. always said, uh, "Oh, I, I really, really love that," and and they had that regular weekly yep. um, dart. Yep. And they want to keep that regular weekly activity and it's meeting with other people as well. So it serves, it serves lots and lots of different purposes. Absolutely, absolutely. Stevie, you you, you done, the, you done the, the Steps of Excellence, didn't you? Yeah, I did it and like that. Uh, 
enjoyed it very much. Mm -hmm. Got tools out of it that I use today and probably will use it for the rest of my life as well. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I'm not sure if you have to do that before you get to do recovery college or what. I don't don't know. And no, it, 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 it's not it's not it's not a, a that or them situation. Yeah. You know, it, it, they're yeah. all they're all developing self awareness and yeah. and stuff. You know, so they're all as good as each other. Yeah, um, they complement each other. Say, yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. They're good, both just as good as each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think you've managed to get onto these things in the past, John. Um, is it something that interests you? Um, yeah, I mean, when we were uh, doing a series of episodes um, just before the holidays that were based on um, some of that material, uh, yeah, I found that very interesting. Um, certainly, it was, it was quite uh, a good learning experience just uh, in doing those shows. Yep. Yep. Excellent. So we'll have to have to get your names on the list once we start. And then you know, the, the, the a, a lot of the the background work uh, involved in this the, the development of pathway process is making sure that we don't overlap. You know, so so we, we're trying as best we can that you know as one course finishes, but we'll all try and, and and run the other one so that there's not two courses running at the same time. So AIR's not running in the 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 peer to peer training and uh, ADA at the same time they're doing a self coaching. You know, it's a little bit of a clash, but we'll certainly make sure that. They're not duplicated on the same days, um, and we'll try not to overload one week with too much learning and not enough fun stuff as well, because that that's part of it as well. You know, a lot of the early part of recovery is learning to be comfortable in groups. Um, I know, I know myself that that was you know that that anxiety about going into strange circumstances with people I didn't know. Um, uh, I found that very very discomforting um stevie would you like to come in on uh, you know that uh that early early group association yeah so i found it even the group like mine was dark the the i was in any kind of group setting from maybe school this right. is the first time i've been in any kind of group set like that um, and it was done, and it was. Oh, did it like me? Or did, yeah. did I get, I'm going to get on with these guys and get all for. Um, but it, after two weeks, it was, it was two, two, three weeks. Everything was you knew if it, it was going to be okay. The journey there was okay. You was in a so anxious. She was still maybe anxious, but not as anxious as week one and week two. Yeah. So, so as, as as you, the more you engage with it, the more you realise that the fears you were feeling were were there's no real. Yeah, yeah, they were false. Yeah, yeah, it was false. Yeah, but we we'll only get that experience by pushing ourselves into it, innit? Oh uh, yeah. If I stayed sitting on the couch, then nothing would have happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But to go and do something before you can, like you say, it's a, just a thought. If you yeah. don't act on it, then it's just still a thought. Yeah, absolutely. And also, if, if, we, if we don't if we don't manage to engage, we also we end up beating myself up a bit. Yeah. Um, you know, oh, I should have, or you know, I wish I had, or fit you do, this is, fit, this is what you always do, all that negative thoughts, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's that over time, slowly, 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 small introductions, maybe, you know, that's why the, the, the drop-ins are, 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 are a, a social aspect. Uh, just to start getting a little bit more comfortable in that environment, so it's it's all it's all good stuff. I hope it's all good stuff, and we hope that what we're pulling together is is it's all encompassing. It's it's attractive. We're we're, we're hoping to organise um, the walking group. We've got a couple of guys doing the the what's it called, John? The walking training. Can you remember? Yeah, they, they, they've come up. They came up with a title to call the group itself the Walking to Wellness. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a, a you know a weekly walk that they were hoping to organise. But there's a, a small training for package, a training package to 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 have uh, walk leaders 
um, that, that they know a little bit about organising a walk and making sure that nobody's left behind and things like that. But I can't remember. But it's a couple of the guys, Joan included, um, Joan, Lindsay and a, a couple of the chaps, they've been uh, attended the course. So we'll introduce that. Uh, ADA will still be doing their, their gardening groups. Um, they, they got an award for the hort from the Horticultural Society just very recently, recognition for their, their, their recovery garden. Um, so they'll be once the, the restrictions are lifted and they'll be opening up the gardens again up in Hazelhead Park. Um, uh, we're not sure, there's nothing confirmed yet, but uh, there's, there is hope that we can get the, the, the bee, what was it to say, bee growers group? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beekeepers group, yeah. Um, bee growers, oh my gosh. Um, so, yeah, yeah so as, 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 uh, I know that... Uh, Graham, um, he, they have identified a couple of other sites to get hives up in the town centre. Um, so uh, there's hope that we can uh, get that re, re, revitalised, relaunched. Um, so with the, the prospects of some interaction, social interaction, opportunities for learning, opportunities to, to grow our confidence in, in the environment of others, this is all hopefully assisting people to get into that progressive get out of the stuckness yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah looking forward to it so much because we have been sort of stuck a little bit and we've had to park this stuff again twice we were planning to roll this out previously but unfortunately I had to had to put it in the back burner but really excited um, and hopefully this is letting everyone know of the opportunities that will come about um, uh, very 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 soon yeah so uh, if we go back to uh, what we we're discussing before that, that, that last song break um, all about the pathway and the th opportunities we're going to be looking to create um, one of the major um, priorities projects um, that AR has taken on board um, and we really are make, making it a, a, a focal point of the things that we do, uh, certainly in this next year and, 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 and onwards and ongoing, is um, broadening and doing as much as we can to encourage uh, the engagement of family members. Um, we, we believe that it's a, an area that is um, that lacks provision, um, but we have made endeavours uh, in our own way uh, with a couple of projects to try and encourage family members to, to, to get in touch. Um, and we will be launching a fairly major press campaign um, uh, in, in April, um, where we hope to have family members uh, uh, complete a, a, a survey that we'll, we'll put together and we hope to, to, to garner the information from that survey as to how we can best provide an avail support at times that are convenient for family members, what we may need to provide in addition to support um, opportunities. Um, and the best time of the day, you know, uh, you know we, we, we really don't we, we, you know, we are trying to do your guys thinking. So what we hope to get from the research project, that's why we're using the press to promote it so that we can hopefully get um, people, uh, a number of people to engage and we can let you know what it is that we can provide to assist uh, and, and better inform um, family members who have been affected by the addictive behaviour and substance use of a loved one how they can engage with support that is specifically tailored to support them in their own recovery processes. Um, because addiction not only affects the person who is having problems with substances, it affects the, those people around them. And if you think that the average person who has found themselves um, having issues through substance use um, and or other addictive behaviours, they will impact with, in general, three to four individuals. 
So for every person affected by, there is a great number of family members who are also affected by that circumstances, that life events. So we hope um, that through the survey, um, and we will be providing a whole morning available to family support, um, and we will populate that with hopefully um, following the information we can garner from the survey with support opportunities, group opportunities, uh, learning and information opportunities uh, to provide as full and broad ranging support that is available to individuals on a recovery journey from addiction as well as family members. As part of that process, there was a couple of the members, uh, myself included, who attended um, CRAFT, uh, that's Community Reinforcement Something Family Training. I can't remember what the A stands for. Oops, um, I should have checked up. Um, uh, uh, we have uh, undergone that training and uh, I and uh, another uh, member of here uh, are, are now, uh, we have the, the, the paperwork. Is that the right word? No, we can deliver craft training. Um, so we will be delivering and availing that on a one-to-one -one basis, uh, introducing craft, the craft process to individuals, um, family members uh, for one-to-one -one support. But also we'll be introducing group opportunities to continue to learn the craft tools and how that's um, you can use the, to the, the tools on your day-to-day -day lives and, and, and issues that will, will come up um, uh, just as life goes on. So that is hopefully... Um, that's our plans, but also, more importantly, the way we hope to gather input and feedback from you guys out there, you know, the family members, um, you know, how, what, what, what has been the barriers um, for you provide, uh, looking to seek support for yourself. And also, uh, ultimately, um, we would like to see family members more involved in the support structure other individuals and their own, you know, the planning of recovery journeys and etc. Because at the end of the day, they are the first port of call um, to a lot of guys who are having issues. The family members are the first support and the first carers um, uh, who are involved and, are, and, and who continue to be involved. So, yeah. If you see the survey, please give it a little bit of time. Um, we will be putting out in as many different platforms as we can, including press. Um, and if you get the opportunity, get some feedback um, and hopefully we can provide something. Am I forgetting anything, guys? Am I, have, I, have I overlooked anything that's been spoken about? Nothing comes to mind at the moment. We've covered quite a lot um, yeah. today. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to speak about so re-entry. Um, what was the term that we used? Opportunities. Opportunity. We've kind of covered a little bit about that in a way. Yep, yep, yep. What about things that, you know, not, not, not all to do with AIR and the, the things that we are um, trying to provide as an organisation? What other opportunities are we we're individually looking to, 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 to take and grasp um, as the restrictions um, continue to lift and... Um, the, we're getting ongoing reports from, from government and, and they look like they will be lessening um, over the next few weeks. Um, so what about individual plans and uh, hopes? Um, Joan, you anything that... Just the first thing that springs to mind for me is, is that, you know, lifting the stay at home and, and eventually lifting how far we can travel. Yeah. Um, one, so that I can travel and visit family. But my goal had always been to complete all the Monroes. And um, by the time I was at X age, and I'm past that X age, but I still want to complete them. Um, but it really does mean traveling quite a distance because it's all the remote yeah. um, Monroes. And, and so that is, is, a, is a kind of goal. Um, so that kind of opportunity, just having that, that opportunity and that freedom to get back out into the hills is what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I won't mm -hmm. say what age I wanted to complete them by, yeah. but I'm well past 42. it. 
<laughs> 42, I, I, I know. It was 40. <laughs> yes, yes, the same age as I am. <laughs> Stevie, you any, you any specific plans that you're looking forward to? Uh, I know there's a, a little niece that you're dying to give a hug to. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely dying to see her proper, like properly get to see her and hold her and stuff. Um, get back to my groups and just back to what I was doing before everything shut down because it was only a couple of years doing it, so it was just a, it was still new. Mm-hmm. I mean, so yeah, to get back to just being in the same room as yeah. half my peers and stuff would be great. Yeah. Get, yeah. get time and, um, with my niece and my, my brother and stuff, my father, my mom. Good stuff. Good stuff. John? Uh, much the same, really. Uh, just, yeah, it'd be nice to be getting out and actually seeing folk in person. You know, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, even with Zoom, it's been a, a obviously a fairly isolating time. Uh, just going to another local authority would be quite a novelty. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know, just simple things, really. Um, and uh, um, yeah, getting out and about, uh, going for walks, uh, getting out to explore, seeing people, all kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That, 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 that and I think everybody's expressed it, that, that, that freedom, yeah, to, to, to do, you know, to do and partake in things that we really enjoy and, and being part to a, and meeting up with our loved ones. And um, I, I can't wait to actually go out and it's like that sunny Sunday tour, you know, go out in a little car journey, go for a walk and then go into a nice coffee shop and have a nice, a nice frothy coffee and, and just relax that chill, that chill space out in, out in, you know, it's not even as company you're integrating with, but you still feel part of that, you know, that, you know, sitting, eating in the same space. And yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. So all yeah. these stuff that we can look forward to. Yeah. That we know that this past year has been very difficult for everyone. Um, but uh, we're through it. We're through it. Yeah. We, we, we've got through the other side. There's still things we'll have to have to deal with. But uh, we're through the other side and we can we can look forward with a little bit of confidence now. So I'm guessing um, I'll ask quickly ask and get a wink from my timekeeper. I'm guessing we're running out of time. The beauty of live recording. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, sadly, time time always beats us. And thanks everyone for their contributions. And I, I hope some of the topics have been a little bit inspiring to, for people to shift from um, from that sort of stuckness uh, where we have been and start looking forward a little bit and. You know, looking, looking, looking the opportunities and the 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 the, the prospects. Um, so uh, it's uh, we we'll if you can very quickly grab pen and paper. Yeah, um, we'll give out some contact details. I spoke earlier on. Um, if you want to find a little bit more information about Aberdeen Recovery, you can check out our website. That's at www.aberdeenrecovery.org. Or if you'd like to. A little bit more information about some of the things we've spoken about. Um, please, if you do have access to email, um, give us an email to chatterbox at Aberdeen in Recovery. Um, also, on my website, you'll see our landline contact number, which I don't re- remember, and I'm scared to to quote it in case I get it wrong. <laughs> uh, so it is it is on it is on our, our website as, as well as our our mobile phone. Um, uh, if you do give us a call, if it's out without office hours, we'll have our answer services, our answer machines, um, and we will get back in touch with you ASAP. Um, we'll also, you can catch up with us on Facebook at Aberdeen in Recovery. Um, you can see, hear the podcast version of our shows on our YouTube channel, uh, Aberdeen in Recovery. Um, constant updates uh, by our lovely Lindsay uh, are available on Twitter. That's Republic underscore air. And we have also, in the same name, uh, we've got some uh, stuff. <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Very technical. It comes a whole gambit of, of opportunities. We've got some stuff, probably. 
<laughs> sorry, Linz. Sorry, Linz. Just, just knocking the, the good work that you've done for the last year. Um, anyway, uh, if you are finding yourself in uh, some some uh, difficulties and you would like to speak with someone, you can contact ADA on their helpline. That's a free phone number, 0333 344 8355. They also run a helpline uh, at alcohol and that's a helpline at alcohol and drugs action dot org dot uk i do believe they have a web chat now running on their website so you can connect with that on their, their, their website um, www dot alcohol and drugs action dot org dot uk um, uh, they also still run their needle exchange from the, their office premises at Harden street and they are open monday to fridays from 10 30 to 1 and then from 2 to 5 and then on Saturdays between 12, Saturdays and Sundays between 12 and 1 and 2 and 5. Uh, also, um, I don't have the numbers to hand, but if you uh, would want to speak with anyone, both Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous run their helplines, um, which are available 24-7. Um, and you can pick up these numbers uh, just by Google searching on your phones. Uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous. Um, that's a service that's uh, available on tap, basically. So, um, thanks to the guys, um, and we hope you have a lovely week, and we will catch up with you again soon. So, bye for now. Bye, guys. Bye. The flame in our name is to shine a light onto the pathways of recovery which will build a bridge from dependence to independence for the individual caught in the shadows of addiction and looking